We have Donald Trump is going to be leaving New York. He was there for a long interview, deposition, really. Seven hours is what they're saying with Tishy Tish James from New York. And we know who she is. She was the attorney general who was running basically on prosecuting Trump. So we'll talk about her today. We've got a couple of clips. We'll see what happened at the deposition. This was a long drawn game that Tishy is playing. She finally got Donald Trump back in for another sit down. So we'll go through that one. We've got some clips from Jim Jordan. Byron Donalds endorses Donald Trump. And we'll hear and see what Mike Pence has to say about all of that today. And then I want to turn our attention over to another lawsuit. So we've been covering a bunch of different avenues by which Trump is being assaulted, including the special counsel, Georgia, Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, many other little smaller nipping at the heels types of lawsuits. But this one is coming up right ready for a trial. In fact, it's supposed to be starting, I believe, on the 24th. But this involves this woman, E. Jean Carroll. And you remember her. We've talked about her here before on this channel. Well, her case is getting ready for a trial and a big whopper just dropped out in the court filings. Apparently, her lawyer reached out to our friend of this channel, Alina Abba, and sent her an email and said, hey, uh-oh, guess what? You know those things that we told you we thought were true? Not true. There's actually a lot more to the story. And that changes everything because the judge has reopened discovery and is allowing them to ask questions about this guy, the billionaire known as Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. And so we've got several different filings we'll go through here. Alina Abba sent a letter to the judge asking for the reopening of disclosure. We'll see what E. Jean Carroll's lawyers said when they sent this over to Alina Abba. And we'll also see what the judge ruled with regards to this discovery and when the trial is. So we've got a lot to get to today, my friends. And of course, as we know, when we are getting ready to do some serious heavy lifting on the court docket, we got to make sure we're properly nutritionized, don't we? And the best way to do that is by going over to fieldofgreens.com, where we all know we would like to lose some of those little leftover pandemic pounds, just a little bit. But I know that you're sick of those weight loss ads, fad diets. We've seen them. We know that they don't work. But you know what does? It's pretty easy. You see these little vegetables on your screen. Daily servings of eating them. You do that, you eat those vegetables. I know it's a pain to prepare and I know it's a pain to store, but you, you'd probably be a little bit healthier, right? But you don't have to worry about the storage and you don't have to worry about the preparation because we've got Field of Greens. Now, Field of Greens is a science-backed formula. Very specific fruits and vegetables, my friends, that you're not gonna find in any other product. And proper nutrition, as we know, reboots your metabolism so you can burn calories faster and lose weight the healthier way. And Feel the Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. Yes, you're gonna look and feel healthier fast, but the greater proof is gonna come at your next doctor's checkup when he says, wow, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing, keep it up. And so let's get you started go on over to fieldofgreens.com. They've got all such, sorts of good stuff for exercise, for sleep, for movement, for calm, a lot of good stuff at fieldofgreens.com. And when you go there, don't forget to use code Robert so you can save 15% at checkout. And remember, my friends, the vegetables want to be eaten. That's why they're here. All right, so with that said, and with us properly fortified and neutrified, let's get into it. Donald Trump leaves New York after what they say was a seven hour deposition with old Letitia James, the attorney general. Now, she was the woman here who used to call herself Tish. Tish James was the moniker she went by before she changed it to Letitia. And so we honor and respect her original name, which, of course, was Tish. Shortened here just you know, for friendly vernacular to Tishy. So Tishy James, the attorney general from New York, is here, and she's often a little bit angry with Donald Trump. In fact, she ran for the attorney general on the entire basis of prosecuting Donald Trump. And so we are going to go to the New York Times to see what this whole charade was about. They like to fake like this is a legitimate thing happening, like Donald Trump being prosecuted, being sued by litigious Letitia Tishy James. 
is very normal. And this is all above board and very ethical and so on. But that's not true at all, in my humble opinion. Why? Because this woman ran for office on the basis of going after Donald Trump. And that's not how this country is supposed to work. You're not supposed to go after people. You're supposed to go after policies. She is elevated now to the main law enforcement officer, the attorney general of the state of New York. She has great power. With that comes great responsibility. You're not supposed to, Spider-Man said that, you're not supposed to run around campaigning to go after your political opponents. And then when you get elected to that position, attack your political opponents. That's banana Republic stuff. That's nuts. But this is exactly what this woman was doing. And she got elected because there's a bunch of other mob individuals in New York. And I don't mean the criminal mob. I mean, more analogous to the Roman mob in the Colosseum. Back then, they were feeding Christians to the lions. Here, they're feeding Donald Trump to Letitia James. And they're just shouting there from the chorus, from the crowd in New York, kill, 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 kill. And they elect her and she gets in there and she spends years doing it. Here is the entire basis for her campaign. Will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president. We need to focus on Donald Trump. We need to follow his money. What is fueling my soul right now is Trump. This illegitimate president. I look forward to going into the office of attorney general every day, suing him and then going home. What a nut. Apologies to all the headphones users. My right ear is also gone. But let's listen to that one more time. Will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely assume we're going to be a real pain in the ass. Okay, that is literally what's happening right now. She is suing Donald Trump. She is really becoming a pain in his ass. That is why she got elected. She ran on this. I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president. And you can see the spasms. We always see the spasms. I mean, look, I know I'm, I have an expressive face from time to time here on this channel. I'm not running for a, a position to go prosecute and eviscerate somebody. That's not my entire basis for existence here, despite what it sometimes may seem. Here, this is an elected official who is contorting herself, just illegitimate, illegitimate, just constantly. It's really a painful thing. And she is now exercising the power of this office and going after him full steam ahead. It's on Donald Trump. We need to follow his money. What is fueling my soul right now is Trump. What is fueling my soul? Do you hear that? Some people wake up thinking about their kids or about their passion or about their God or how they can be of service to others or humanity. Many other things, something to care for, something to be a part of, a way to belong, a way to be a better person, a way to contribute to this planet. Not this woman. She wakes up fueled by rage in her soul, fed by Donald Trump. My soul right now is Trump. This illegitimate president. I look forward to going into the office of attorney general every day, suing him and then going home. Suing him and going home. Well, she's right in the middle of that, literally suing him at the moment. And the New York Times is pretending this is legitimate. A lot of other people in the media they say Trump is questioned in New York Attorney General's lawsuit. Letitia Tishy James, the spa facial spasmer, the Attorney General psychopath who is fueled by rage from Donald, has sued Trump and his three kids. Okay, <laughs> this is what that's happening in this country. It's sick, man, accusing them of staggering fraud. Donald Trump, second dip deposition. In the first one, he lashed out, accusing her of being motivated by politics. And the New York Times is saying, accusations? Does it, are you, is there any de debate about this? Is there any doubt? She said it in her own campaign ads. We just listened to a whole montage there. Hopefully they got the memo about that over at the Times. But on Thursday, Donald Trump was again questioned under oath by Tishy in the latest of a series of what they call our legal predicaments or legal warfare by a bunch of undemocratic maniacs. Miss James civil case was filed in September, expected to go to trial later this year, accuses Trump and his family of staggering fraud. 
billions of dollars of overvaluations. The lawsuit seeks 250 million that Miss James contends was reaped through those deceptions, asks a judge to run the former president out of business in the state if he's found liable at trial. Mr. Trump was questioned for much of the day on Thursday, arriving at Miss James' office in Lower Manhattan shortly before 10 a.m., departing just after 6, part of the, of the discovery phase in the case as they prepare for trial. There's Tishy. While the deposition was held in private, people with knowledge of the proceedings said that Trump answered questions without asserting his right against self-incrimination. The session was neither overly combative nor polite. Mr. Trump did provide some substantive answers. In a statement on Thursday, Alina Abba wanted Mr. Trump's lawyers, what, she's a great lawyer, that he had answered every question. She said, as we said from day one, there's absolutely no case, or she said, brilliant, love that. This is the second time that lawyers for Ms. James have questioned Mr. Trump under oath. The first time he sat for the depot, he invoked his Fifth Amendment right hundreds of times over four hours. During that depot, which came shortly before the attorney general filed her lawsuit, Mr. Trump lashed out at James, accusing her of being motivated by politics because she is, because she said so during her campaign. Because he was in the White House or on the campaign trail and no longer running the company, Mr. Trump might have tried to avoid direct answers, consistently denied wrongdoing, apparently during this, labeled this a witch hunt, which is true. Mrs. James was present for at least part of the depot on Thursday. She did not pose questions, but read an introductory statement as the morning session began, because that's basically what she's capable of doing. That's about questions requires some afterthought. You know, somebody, you ask a question, somebody answers the question. You've got to have some acuity to then answer a subsequent question that's based upon the answer. And it's complicated. It requires a couple of things. Coming out and reading a statement that somebody else wrote for you and typed up on a note card and just to go read this. You know, I can do that. Go in there. Donald Trump uh, terr terrifies me to do this today, but we have to do this to get to the bottom of this. New York will stand for justice, uh, no matter what the cost. No, nobody's above the law. Trump's going, who is this psycho person? Get out of here. So Mr. Trump's decision to answer questions may reflect a legal calculation about the difference between civil trials and criminal trials. Saying that if Trump remains silent in the civil trials, they may use that against him. All right. Now, whenever Trump is deposed, they're worried that he goes off script. Abba said, not worried about that. President Trump is not only willing, but also eager to testify before the attorney general today, adding that he remains resolute in his stance, that he has nothing to conceal. He looks forward to educating the attorney general about the immense success, the best of his multi-billion dollar company. Now, there's a, some concern here. You know, anytime that a defendant in a criminal case is talking at all, defense attorneys are squirming in their chair. They're like, shut up, don't, you know, stop talking. And if Donald Trump is openly communicating under oath, right, in another, uh, uh, under oath, I shouldn't, should have put it in quotes, but literally under oath, right, in another case, the question is, could he say anything that might implicate him? Or is Tishy working with Bragg together? You know, you talk to him about this, you get him start talking about the civil stuff, get him under oath. I'm prosecuting him for other criminal charges. And if he says something that I can take out and use and implicate over here, maybe I'll do that and run with it. You know, these people are nefarious as can be. They've been plotting this all over the place. The way I think about it, it's like different pieces on a map. They're just slowly assembling pieces on the board like the leaked Ukraine documents. Here, last week, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office unsealed the indictment, which accused him of covering up funds. Bragg has an ongoing investigation. And here's some substance now. Ms. James' lawsuit accused Trump of lying to lenders and insurers about the value of the assets, inflated them, asserted that he violated state criminal law and plausibly federal law and detailed the way Trump's annual financial statements inflated the worth of his best-known properties, Trump Tower, 40 Wall Street, Mar-a-Lago, to secure better terms from lenders. Yeah, I've got this collateral. It's worth this amount. Give me a loan. Give me better terms. He, they're saying that's illegal. At trial, 
Trump's lawyers, this is so stupid. At trial, Trump's lawyers could note that the financial statements contained disclaimers noting that they were unaudited estimates. You know, hey, these are estimates. Do your due diligence if you don't believe our numbers. This is what we think they're worth. This is what we could get for them. If you have questions about it, do your own due diligence. They said, Christopher Kesey, his lawyer, that these transactions were wildly profitable for the banks. In other words, there, there was no harm in any of this stuff. She's just trying to stick him for something. Was also named, the company was named as a defendant in January. There was a motion to dismiss. So this is continuing on. Now we'll see when this trial is ultimately scheduled for, but psycho Letitia Tish James Dragged him in there yet again. He sat there for seven hours, evidently, and answered a bunch of questions. And we'll see what comes of it. But after Donald Trump wrapped up there, he exited New York. And we can see what it that looked like as he was exiting Trump Tower. You see he's going to give a quick wave. And this came in courtesy of Kyle Mazza. And he's on Twitter at, you can see, Kyle Mazza, W-U-N-F. And see, he was there on scene as Donald Trump was exiting the scene. There he is, just walked by, raises his hand. And then there's the motorcade. There he is. Hey, Trump. A lot of people standing around. All right, so that's Donald Trump exiting New York, and there was an NRA convention taking place basically today simultaneously with Trump's exit, and there were several people talking and reflecting on the recent updates with Donald Trump. This is Jim Jordan saying thank you for being supportive of Donald Trump. He's been put through an ungodly amount of pain and torture for, from all of the different inquisitions being launched in various parts throughout the country. I really, I really want to thank you for helping President Trump over these last years. What they've done to this man, what they've done to a president who did more what he said he would do when he was our leader, when he was our commander in chief than any president I have ever seen. Thank you for standing by him. You think about, they spied on his campaign, they raided his home, now they indict him, they've been after him. But in spite of everyone being after him, he. He said he would reduce regulations. He did. He said he would cut taxes. He did. He said he would build the wall. He did. He said he would put the embassy in Jerusalem. He did. He said he would get us out of that crazy Iran deal. And he did. He said he would put conservatives on our highest court. And he did. And a whole bunch of other things he got done. And he did it with everyone. He did it. President Trump did it with everyone in that town against him. Every Democrat was against him. Everyone in the mainstream press was against him. Half the Republicans were against him. That's Maybe right. They were big time. All the bureaucracy was against him. But in spite of that, he did what he told us, we the people, that he would do. There was an entire reorienting of the whole government, what felt like, to stop Donald Trump after he won in 2016. We saw the FBI started colluding with all the big tech companies to say, hey, censor this and censor that. Delete this. Delete that. We saw Elvis Chan, the Twitter files. Everybody just went hog wild on it. And then when more evidence came to light that all of their allegations were not true, you'd expect the Republicans to say, hey, that's unfair. We're going to take some action and we're going to stand up and rally the troops and support him. But that never happened either. They just said, well, gosh, you know, gosh, you know, maybe maybe he should go. You know, maybe it's time to make a change. Never any support for him. And then they wonder why they lost. And I so appreciate that attitude. So thank you so much by standing by him. What he's been through, I don't know of anyone who could, he stood up to it and he, he always says this and it's so true. He fights for us. He stands, they come after him because he's fighting for us. That is so true. That is so true. Um, let me just finish by saying this. It is a tough time for our country. And I do believe our freedoms and our rights are under assault by the very government that's supposed to serve us. 
But never forget, it's the greatest country ever. And we have risen to the occasion every single time there's been a challenge, every single time there's been some obstacle, some difficulty, we as Americans rise to the challenge. We'll do it again. We got to have the right attitude. I call it the attitude that, that Paul talked about in scripture. My favorite scripture verse, 2 Timothy 4, 7. Paul's the old guy, gives advice to the young guy. What's he say? Fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. I tell people I love that verse because it's not wimpy, sissy words. It's fight, finish, keep. Words of actions, words that fit Americans. That is our charge. It always has been. Right on from Jim Jordan. So good stuff there. I think he's right about it. And I know a lot of people, they might not, you know, Trump might not be their number one candidate. But I think when you zoom out on this and you think, gosh, it's just Trump who happens to be at the top of this hierarchy. It doesn't matter who's at the top of the hierarchy, whether it's Trump now or another Republican candidate later down the line. These are the tactics. These are the techniques. These are the tools that they are now using. They are weaponizing different parts of the go government. They are shattering institutions, breaking historical norms. They don't care about any of that stuff anymore. Donald Trump is just the symbol. He's just the lightning rod who's capturing all of the flame at the moment, but it's not going to be that way forever. And so these are about principles that happen currently to include Donald Trump, but are much bigger and broader than Donald Trump. And so we're hopeful that other Republicans who for some reason can't figure that out, they say, well, we, but yeah, they say, well, we like those values. We like those institutions. We like those morals and those virtues, but we really hate Trump though. And you say, I know, but it's bigger than that. And they say, yeah, but who cares? Cause Trump, you go, all right, well, I guess if you're not going to fight and stand for those things, what's the point of supporting you then either? And we'll see what happens to the Republican party. If they continue to play that stupid game, we'll see how it works out for them. Now, Jim Jordan is not alone. You can see some other Congress people are jumping into this. One of them is named Byron Donalds making his formal announcement known endorsed president donald trump uh what uh you know what brought that on obviously i think i have a pretty good idea i mean look he can hit the ground running day one yeah. he knows how to do the job we all know he's he did the job way better than joe biden could have ever possibly true. dreamed of doing the job <laughs> that's true you see what biden is doing uh well the other piece is if you start looking at the way our primary process is starting to unveil itself you know, the Republican voters want Donald Trump back as our nominee. That's becoming crystal clear as we speak. And of course, we're going to go through that process, yeah. but I think that's the way it's going to end up. If you're going to talk about November 24 and even January 25, who's the person that can go on the world stage with China, with Russia and say, America is now back and here's what we're going to do. It's Donald Trump. Who can actually get our border back in, under control? It's Donald Trump. Right. Who can help us get our economy back on track? He already did it once and he can do it again. It's Donald Trump. Boy. We're going to see if there's continual coalescence between Congress people and if they're going to start to declare and take one position or other positions and where it goes. But we're taking a look at polls. Mike Pence kind of struggling in some of those polls right now and he is asked about that point blank by martha mccallum on fox news she says hey hey vice president pence you know it looks like you're running for president here and you know you're gonna take out donald trump and all these things but uh, he's beating you by about 40 points. Would you like to comment on that? So when the former president announced that he was going to get in the race, you said then that you believed that the American voter would have better choices than him. This is the latest polling. Donald Trump at 54 percent, DeSantis at 24, you at 6 percent and on down the line here. Um, what do you think about the fact that his numbers are so strong right now, sir? Well, I, I think people are so frustrated with the failed policies of the Biden administration at home and abroad that uh, that there would, of course, be a natural attraction, not only to the former president, but I also believe to the policies of our administration. But look, uh, it's early in this process. I think he said there's a natural inclination for Trump. Oh, man, that sucks. He has to say that. You know, he probably hates to say that which is why he adds in, and our administration. People really want Trump and our administration. <laughs> nice try. It's a good effort, man. It's a good effort. Um, what do you think about the fact that his numbers are so strong right now, sir? Well, I, I think people are so frustrated 
with the failed policies of the Biden administration at home and abroad that uh, that there would, of course, be a natural attraction, not only to the former president, but I also believe to the policies of our administration. But look, uh, it's early in this process. I do think we'll have better choices. I think nobody could have defeated uh, Hillary Clinton in 2016 other than Donald Trump. But I think come 2024, uh, our party is going to choose the right standard bearer to meet this moment, to strengthen America at home, uh, and abroad. And my family and I continue to reflect on what role we might play in that. And uh, uh, I promise to keep you informed Good. of any well, decisions we look, uh, we that we make in the days ahead. That decision. We'll be waiting, Mikey. Can't wait to see what you do, what your decision is. I wonder what it's going to be. So Donald Trump leaves New York. He just left seven hour deposition with psycho Tishy James. Of course, that lawsuit will continue on going and we'll continue to cover it. Thank you for subscribing and following along wherever it is you're watching this because there will be much more to come on this case. But Trump is in the middle of another case. It's still Trump time. And this one is fun. Billionaire busted for funding Trump's lawsuit. He was apparently giving money to American Future Republic. He is Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. His name popped up in a new filing in the lawsuit brought by this woman, E. Jean Carroll, the lady we've talked about here before, suing Donald Trump for some pretty bad things, allegedly, that happened some time ago. It's a civil lawsuit, not a criminal lawsuit. And we learned in a recent disclosure from E. Jean Carroll's lawyer that somebody is bankrolling this whole thing. They're involved in a big way by donating money to support and literally fund the claim. So what is going on here? Let's get some background over from this website called The Daily Beast. Here's what they gave us. They tell us that LinkedIn founder is secretly funding E. Jean Carroll's lawsuit against Donald Trump. That's who Reid Hoffman is. He's the billionaire behind LinkedIn, now a mega donor to Democrats, very anti-Trump, has been quietly bankrolling E. Jean Carroll's R case against Donald Trump. And this came out in very surprising last minute disclosures. We're going to go through a letter from Alina Abba, excellent lawyer, says, while it's unclear if there was a payment arrangement, whether it had any material impact on the case, the fact that it remains secret until now is going to support Trump's claims that ultra rich liberals have been pulling the strings on the efforts to take him down. Hoffman is a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, founded professional social network called LinkedIn. Vox identified him as a major Democratic donor who made it his mission to loosen Trump's control over the Republican Party. According to Insider, Hoffman's distaste for Trump, he says he's authoritarian and says he's anti democratic. Hmm. Is it democratic to fund lawsuits to go after your political enemies? Is that democracy in action there, Reed? Even, even has strained his personal relationship with Peter Thiel, who has conversely fashioned himself on the right. Now, we'll learn a little bit more about Carol. She was a magazine columnist. She said Trump took advantage of her in a, you know, our way in a dressing room in a luxury Manhattan department store in the 90s. She wrote a tell-all memoir. Trump called her a liar. She sued him for defamation, and the case has been in legal, legal limbo for nearly four years. Okay, that's what's going on here. So it's not actually a criminal charge of E. Jean Carroll. This is way back in the 90s, so any statute of limitations have passed, but New York said that our survivors can extend the statute of limitations and file lawsuits, probably just for Trump, honestly. They just extended the rule. And she says, oh, perfect. This time she sought a trial. And so this lit this is litigating right now and they are just preparing for trial very soon. And I wanted to share a little bit more about who this individual is, E. Jean Carroll. Now you can't you know, glean her credibility, the truth or the accuracy, I guess, she doesn't add much material to the claim in this clip, but it's still an interesting clip. This is what she was talking about with CNN a long time ago. This clip is not recent. This is just 
who we're talking about. Begin just by asking you about the latest thing that the president has said just moments, a short time ago, he gave an interview to The Hill. He said, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened, okay? I love that. You I am that. so glad I am not his type. I am so glad. This, is, this was 20 years ago. And I probably was, at that moment, in that five minutes, the most attractive woman in Bergdorf's in that one bit of time. And you think that's what it was about for him? 20 years ago. I don't know what it was about. We were, Anderson, we were having a high old time. You remember Donald Trump, hail fellow well met, walking up and down the streets of New York, greeting everybody. Everybody liked him. He You're talking about 1995, 95, 96. 96, he was Shakespearean. He was great. You'd love to see him on the street. So when we met in Bergdorf's and he said, help me, uh, advise me to find a president, I was delighted. I was thrilled. I thought, this is hilarious. I'm wondering. This is hilarious. And then something happened in a changing room or something and things got a little bit not so hilarious from there is what E. Jean Carroll is alleging. But we're going to go through this filing. Alina Abba sent a letter over into the judge asking to reopen discovery. Nobody knew that Reed Hoffman was involved in this case at all. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere due to, due to a disclosure. But before we go through all the filings, let me just show you what this other organization is that was allegedly involved in this. It's called American Future Republic. Sounds very patriotic, you know. And so he names it something like that, probably to hide lurk in the gutters of liberalism. Says that this is a nonprofit. American Future Republic is a left of center nonprofit funder founded in the late 2019 associate with LinkedIn Reed Hoffman. One of two 501c4 nonprofits also funded by Hoffman. Another one is called Patriotic Republic, right? So a left of center guy is creating groups called American Future Republic and Patriotic Republic, right? Now, this was formed Chicago, Illinois. Revenue in 2019, $21.9 million. Holy moly, a lot of money. You can do a lot with that. And you see political funding. American Future Republic was among the top donors to 501c4s and super PACs in 2020. See that? According to the Center for Responsive Politics. All of this documented at influencewatch.com. So we're asking ourselves, that's weird. What does all of this have to do with E. Jean Carroll? and with Donald Trump. This is a strange development. Well, let's take a look at the letters, shall we? This is what we see filed in court. Coming from Abba Madeo, whoever that is, who cares? Coming from Abba's law firm, drafted on April 13, 2023, sent over to the Honorable Lewis Kaplan in the Southern District of New York, in the case regarding E. Jean Carroll, the one we just talked about, and Donald Trump, writes, Your Honor, we're here on behalf of Donald Trump, and apparently we've got some very serious, problematic, belated disclosure from E. Jean Carroll. Meaning we just learned this. We just learned this came out. It raises significant concerns about this plaintiff's lawsuit and her bias and her motive in commencing this case. And Alina is asking for this case to be reopened for the discovery phase so that they can address this issue. They give us some background. They tell us that on October 14th, Miss Carroll sat for her deposition in a different proceeding. There was a series of questions. She was asked about a pertinent issue that looms large over this case, whether her legal fees are being funded by a third party benefactor, particularly somebody with political ties. Ms. Carol, is anybody paying you to do this? Is anybody funding this? Is anybody supporting you doing this? She answered unequivocally in the negative. Here was the question. Ms. Carroll, are you presently paying your lawyer's fees? 
And she said, well, this is a contingency case. And a contingency case means, you know, you don't pay anything. If your lawyer wins, they take a percentage of the fee and you get the rest. You know, in a car accident, you don't pay unless we win. You see all the billboards everywhere. That's contingency. They go, they sue the, the other driver and his insurance company and they get a settlement and they take a third of it and you take the two thirds and that's it. So, hey, Miss Carroll, are you doing that? Are you paying your lawyer's fees? No, this is a contingency case. So you're not paying expenses or anything out of pocket to date. Is that true? He says, oh, gosh, I'm not sure about expenses. I have to look that up. So is anyone else paying your legal fees? Like, we need to know now. Is anybody else paying your legal fees, Miss Carroll? The answer, she said, unequivocally, no. That came from a deposition from E. Jean Carroll. Now, something strange happened after that. That was in October 2022. Trial is right around the corner. In a mere two weeks. And now, guess what? E. Jean Carroll, six months later, right before trial is scheduled to commence, has acknowledged that that statement was inaccurate. Uh-oh, that's not true. On April 10th, defense counsel, Trump's lawyers, received a letter from Carol's lawyers, which stated the following, that Carol now recalls that at some point her lawyer secured additional funding from a nonprofit that offset expenses and fees. Oh no, you're kidding. So they are being funded by a third party benefactor. Wow. And that email, it was a letter that actually came over to Miss Alina Abba. You see, this was drafted by E. Jean Carroll's lawyer. Her, his name, her name is Roberta Kaplan. And they sent this letter over to Alina Abba. They said, hey, Alina, we write to provide certain supplemental information. Ooh, ooh. They said that, hey, you remember when uh, Jean Carroll was doing her deposition on October 14th? You asked the following questions. Are you paying any lawyer's fees? It's contingency. You're not paying any fees, correct? I'm not sure about expenses. Is anyone else paying your legal fees, Miss Carroll? No. I say, I remember when she said that? Yeah, we do. Well, <clears throat> sorry about this. They say, during the course of preparing for her testimony at trial, you're not going to believe this. Miss Carroll has recollected additional information. Ah! Did she recollect it or did her lawyers recollect it is my question. Her lawyers are like, wait, 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 wait. We're getting paid by somebody else. They say, well, Miss Carroll stands by that testimony about this case being a contingency case. It's true. She now recalls, because her lawyer smacked her in the head, hey, that at some point her counsel secured additional funding from a nonprofit organization to offset certain expenses and legal fees. Uh-oh. Man, don't you hate that? She just probably didn't remember. Or maybe didn't even know, <laughs> but her lawyer is, yeah, they're getting compensated because, you know, all this work, it's not just for free. You know, somebody's got to pay for this stuff, especially if you're getting expert witnesses and paying for deposit. Like lawyers generally don't work for free. If it's a personal injury case or something like that, I mean, they're technically working for free, but they do that only at the beginning of their practice. And then new litigation is often funded by old litigation. So somebody was bankrolling this, especially if it's going to be going on for four years. I think these lawyers are working on this for years. She does. I don't know. I don't know how this works. But that's been the point of all of these claims. They just take these little cases with these very malleable people, all drag them up, turn nothing into something and make it into a thing so they can go harass Trump over it. Now, her lawyers say, to be clear, these issues are irrelevant to her claims, right? It has nothing to do with the reason she filed the lawsuit in the first place. And you start to ask yourself, well, maybe it does. If somebody else is paying for this, what else are they giving to her? What else, what other relationships do they have? 
does she even want to do this? I mean, is somebody else encouraging her to do this? Is she biased? Is she being promised something to bring this if it is successful or not? We've got a lot of questions about it. So nevertheless, we are supplementing this record, they say, out of an excess of caution. Right. We didn't do anything wrong, but just letting you know. If you intend to pursue these issues in cross-examining Ms. Carroll in any other way at trial, we should schedule a meet and confer to question the admissibility of this as determined by the court. And so we go, wow, all right. So yeah, Alina Abba's sitting there. She's like, gosh, trial's coming up right around the corner. This kind of stinks, you know, I'm gonna figure out what my opening argument's gonna look like and all this stuff. And then this, this letter, oh, she opens this letter, her assistant comes in. You're not gonna believe this one. She goes, oh, what is it? And, and boom, it is here. Wait a minute. There's a billionaire backer who is funding this whole case? Perfect. Let's see what else happened. We go back to Alina's question. Her letter, she continues. Now, of course, the proposition that Carol just suddenly, quote, recollected the source of her funding, which has spanned four years, spawned two separate action, has been before numerous state, federal, and appellate courts, is not only preposterous, it's demonstrably false. It defies logic to believe that her own lawyers, four of whom were present at her deposition, were unaware that their own firm, the lawyers, had secured additional funding from a nonprofit organization to bankroll the various lawsuits and ensure their bills were being paid. It's equally inconceivable that neither Carol nor her counsel have been aware of the identity of the third party benefactor who is providing these payments. There is no justifiable excuse for her prolonged failure to disclose this to us timely. She perjured herself during her depo, sat by, her lawyers allowed her to do it, answering the question, no, I'm not paying any bills. Anybody else paying your bills? No. So knowing full well that her testimony was false, they conspired to conceal the truth for nearly six months, and then they disclosed it on the eve of trial. Yeah, who was paying the bills for the last six months? We'd like to see your ledger. Were you billing anybody or did you just aggregate all your bills, drop the bill last month or let's, let, let's say last week and say, oh gosh, you know what? <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. We totaled our invoice and then we decided we needed to be paid for the last six months of work after the deposition. And we realized then after we paid our bills or after we demanded to be paid that this was a problem, uh, I doubt it. Okay. We'd like to see all of the ledgers now who, when were the payments coming in? What were the disbursements, the distributions, however it was being done. We want to see it after receiving the April 10th letter, Trump's team immediately scheduled a meet and confer just like they suggested with Carol's team that was held the next day on the 11th. Now let's see what they said happened at that call. This was their letter from the 11th. So lawyers have a meet and confer. Apparently this person named Chad Siegel was at the meeting. After the meeting, they summarize the meeting. Hey, Chad, just want to write this as a follow-up to our meet and confer earlier today about my letter to Alina that we just read. We maintain our position that the funding secured to defray Miss Carroll's expenses and fees is not relevant to any of the issues the jury is going to consider. It's only about what we want it to be about. So based on our discussion, it appears that you, Chad, may be operating on a misunderstanding of the facts. Oh boy, things are about to get hot here. All right, boys and girls. We've got the language coming out. You might be misunderstanding of the facts. It's about to get rated R here. All right, put the kids to bed. As Ms. Carroll testified at her deposition, she had and continues to have a contingency fee agreement with her counsel. In September 2020, well after Ms. Carroll filed her state court complaint in November, counsel for Ms. Carroll secured financial support from a nonprofit organization that would help offset certain costs and fees in connection with our work. Ms. Carroll has never met and never been a party to any communications with any nonprofits or financial supporters. They say the resources that Ms. Carroll's counsel were able to secure 
obviously have nothing to do with what happened at Bergdorf Goodman and whether Donald Trump lied about her at all. This is consistent with the position we've taken throughout these proceedings and your failure to raise this issue in connection with our objection is moots this, I, I suppose. They say for the foregoing reasons, we cannot agree this effort to adjourn the trial by reopening discovery on this irrelevant point. Nevertheless, in an effort to compromise in order to put this issue behind us, we would be willing to disclose the identity of the funder and agree not to object on relevance questions that you ask on cross-examination about personal knowledge of the funding that her counsel secured, right? So they want that very narrowly tailored. You can only ask her about whether she knew about the funding, not anything actually about the funding, about the lawyers, not about the identity of this person. We can't, we're not telling you anything. We'll tell you his identity if you agree to limit this stuff. Please let us know whether we should schedule another meeting in case you decide for any relief. Include this letter with anything that you send into the court. Very truly yours, Roberta. So that got sent over to Alina's office. Alina said, well, we're obviously not gonna be doing any of that stuff. So they held the meeting. Alina said that there was, in fact, a call. We saw their summary of the call. This is what Alina says. During the call, defense counsel, meaning Alina and her team, inquired as to the identity of this, quote, nonprofit organization that was funding plaintiff's lawsuits. They also requested that Carol turn over documentation relating to the source of the funding. We want to know about the payment history, the retainer agreement, that they had with this third-party benefactor. They also requested that the plaintiff appear for another deposition so that Carol could come in and they would only limit it. We're not gonna ask about anything. We're only gonna ask about the funding. And also they want Carol's consent to make a joint application for a brief adjournment of the trial date for additional discovery. So postpone the trial so they can investigate. That is the summary from Alina to the judge. Now, in response to that, Carol's lawyers refused to disclose the identity. They said, nope, we refuse to do that. We're going to advise on the remaining requests. However, later that evening, Roberta Kaplan submitted a letter to the defense that we just read. And pursuant to that letter, there was another conference call. On the call, Carol's lawyer initially refused to disclose the identity. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I, I need you to agree, she said, to waive your ability to seek court intervention about additional discovery about him. You see what this is? Very important sentence here. On the call, sounds like, Roberta Kaplan, the lawyer for E. Jean Carroll, or wh whomever she was speaking with at the time. I'll tell you his name, but you can't ask additional questions about it. No additional discovery about him. When defense counsel said, uh, no, we're not going to do that. Then counsel provided only the name of an individual called Reed Hoffman. She outed him on the phone call. It's like a scene in a movie. She's like, I don't want to do it. Who knows what Reed Hoffman has? Yeah. It's Reed Hoffman. Alina's like, yes. Perfect. Reed Hoffman, who, according to the lawyer, is the primary backer of the nonprofit. Plaintiff's counsel continued to refuse to disclose the identity of the nonprofit prompting the parties to have another follow-up meet and confer later the day. When plaintiff ultimately disclosed that the nonprofit organization is American Future Republic, we got the goods. Additional discussions took place, but no agreement was able to be reached. Now, Lena says that this 11th hour disclosure, that Carol's legal fees are being subsidized by American Future Republic and Reed Hoffman is very troubling. And based on our initial research, says Elena, 
There appears to be little to no publicly available information on American Future Republic, aside from the fact that it was funded by a billionaire, Reed Hoffman. He's one of the largest donors to the Democratic Party, one of the most reportedly influential of the Trump era. Vocal critic of Trump and his policies, he's on record saying that he would spend as much as he possibly can to avoid another Trump presidency, saying it would be destructive to our society. Billionaires funding everything, including lawsuits. Since 2017, has reportedly been funding groups to create a bulwark against Trump. He previously contributed more than $600,000 to the legal defense fund of Bean LLC, otherwise known as, <gasps> look, Fusion GPS. Wow. The company responsible for the creation of the Steele dossier and was the primary source of funding for an organization that launched an elaborate false flag operation, spreading misinformation about Republican senatorial candidates that might cost them the election. Trump's team says this revelation raises significant questions as to Ms. Carroll's credibility, as well as her motive for bringing this instant action. It also strikes at one of the hearts of the key aspects of her defamation claim. Whether the instant action is a hoax that was commenced to advance a political agenda. Do you see, it's not even about the actual R. It's not even about the underlying allegation. This isn't about Trump assaulting a woman in a bathroom or in a changing room. That happened a long time ago, allegedly, and it was investigated, nothing happened. If, this hap if the statute of limitations expired, it's all done. But all she has to do is make a claim about it, say it publicly. They know Trump's gonna respond to it. They know he's gonna say, She's a liar. And then all they have to do is file a defamation suit. And now Trump is bound up in litigation for years, literal years, because they created a legal incision point. As such, this issue has a material bearing on the defense strategy. Additional discovery is needed. Due to the belated nature of this disclosure, they say Trump has been deprived of an opportunity to investigate this. In fact, given that this information was concealed for months, only to be abruptly divulged on the eve of trial, they say this contact, conduct appears to be legitimate and a legitimate attempt to cut off proper disclosure. Therefore, in view of the circumstances at hand and for the reasons outlined below, Trump respectfully seeks the following a limited reopening of the discovery period restricted to the investigation of the funding issue, a one month continuance of the trial, the need for which with respect to the issue comes from the failure to disclose this material. And in the alternative, an adverse instruction against Carol with respect to her willful defiance of her discovery obligations. Now they're going to run through and give us some factors here. They say we should be reopening discovery if we balance out these factors. One, is trial imminent? Yeah, in this case, it's right around the corner. Whether the request is opposed? Yeah, they're going to oppose this. Of course, they've already confirmed that. Whether the non moving party would be prejudiced? Is E. Jean Carroll prejudiced by providing information about this? She has got to do some work. But how hard is it? She's already in the middle of lit litigation, already done that work. We'll see. Whether the moving party was diligent in obtaining discovery in the first place. Did Trump, Trump ask for this? Did Alina and her team in inquire? Of course they did. They asked the question legitimately, and she changed her answer after the fact six months later, or her lawyers did. And the foreseeability of the need for additional discovery and the likelihood it's going to lead to relevant evidence. Okay, so all of these different factors we sort of put these on a scale and we weigh them all. We say, okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's not much. That's not much. That's not much. Okay, we got a lot and sort of not much. Which one wins? In this case, the trial is set, scheduled to commence in less than two weeks. We're scheduled for April 25th, my friends. A defamation trial against Donald Trump, E. Jean Carroll, 
when is that? That is going to be not next week, but the following Tuesday. Typically, such close proximity would weigh against the defendant, the moving party. But in this case, should be construed in his favor because they inadvertently disclosed it. Trump didn't ask, Trump didn't do anything. They waited 178 days following the deposition to correct it. They wanted a tactical advantage. And so they're asking the judge, you got to reopen this, man. This is not fair. Plaintiff should not be permitted to benefit from her failure to open, to disclose this earlier. This request is opposed by the plaintiff. They say that Carol would not be prejudiced here. They should have originally abided by her discovery obligations. And they say that she's also been diligent. Trump has already been diligent in getting these materials or demanding these materials. This is interesting. They're bringing up the attorney-client privilege and talking about funding. But they say her assertion that that is protected, coupled with her sworn denial, provided her with no reason to believe that any third-party benefactor was involved with the payment, only corrected in a letter that they sent over later. All right, let's see what else they say. Now, in addition, the source of the funding of E. Jean Carroll's legal fees is particularly relevant given the political overtones of this case. This action was filed against Trump while he was the president of the country, and it continued into his candidacy for 2024, the presidential election now. He's currently the leading Republican candidate. E. Jean Carroll has been an outspoken critic of Donald Trump and his political policies, and around the time that the first lawsuit commenced, she frequently expressed, expressed her desire to see him removed from office. She says, most interestingly, Carol admitted during her deposition that she initiated the lawsuit at the urging of guess who? George Conway, the ex-husband of her, the one, Conway, Kellyanne Conway, uh, Kellyanne, right? A well-known detractor of defendant and his politics. Kellyanne, Kellyanne, right? Kellyanne, who referred to her and her current counsel, Kaplan, Hecker, and Fink, a firm with ties to the Democratic Party, which is engaged in numerous lawsuits against Trump. So George Conway and Reed Hoffman are, you can see, just like little motivators to Carol to get her to do this thing. Apparently, there was some other questions. Question was to Jean, at what point did you decide to file a lawsuit against Trump? She says, well, where, wherever I went after the story went, people said, are you going to sue him? Are you going to sue him? And I would say, no, 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 not going to do it. I'm just not. And then I had a conversation with someone who knew the ins and outs, you know, an actual lawyer. And he said, you should really seriously think about this. Wonder who that was, George Conway? Who was that lawyer without getting into the conversation about what you told him? What'd you? Who was it? George Conway. So after you spoke to George, did you retain counsel? Yeah. How soon after? The day after. The day? Two days after. Did George recommend Miss Kaplan here who's representing you? Yes, he did. Isn't that funny? And Kaplan was already ready to go. Perfect. We, they, they had their deal signed up. And they had funding backed by a billionaire. So they had all the pieces in place. Trump's team says, moreover, Carol's lawyers admitted that Reed Hoffman was one of the underlying sources of her funding. Hoffman is one of the largest individual donors to the Democratic Party, an outspoken critic of Trump, active contributor to numerous anti-Trump initiatives. And given the political machinations, which are at issue here, Mr. Hoffman's involvement is certainly noteworthy. They identify another case from the Southern District, 2020. They say there the court made a conditional ruling that said the admission of evidence at trial 
that concerns the political leanings of a third party benefactor is admissible, made a conditional ruling, allowing it to come in. So they're looking at, at precedent. They're saying, your honor, you know, I know it might feel weird to allow us to talk about a third party benefactor who is a political partisan who's funding this whole scam, but there's precedent for it. Here's this case called Eastern Profit Corporation that was filed back in 2020. A judge said, you can do it. If it concerned identity and political leanings, and if they were funding litigation costs, which sounds like exactly what's happening here. The court permitted the testimony and the questioning of the identity of the funder, provided that in that case, the plaintiff could show it had good faith belief that the funder was affiliated with a foreign political party. If it tends to show a relationship. The court said that the defendant had to put its own political associations in issue and could not complain if they sought to probe those things. Now, in this case, Trump's team says, here, Ms. Carroll and her potential political ties are pertinent to her motivation for filing this in the first place, her potential bias against Trump and her credibility as a witness. She waited until Trump was a sitting president to come forward with her purported 25-year-old allegation that he assaulted her. And she chose to do so in a profoundly public manner through the publication of a book. She also admitted she had no intention of filing the first lawsuit or this one until urged to do so by George Conway. And therefore, they say, Your Honor, she has undoubtedly put her political associations in issue here and we're entitled to probe those. We have the right to ask about this. It's relevant to bias, motive, intent. And it bears directly on her defamation claim. Namely, whether this has been brought for the purpose of advancing a political agenda, saying there is no defamation that happened here. There is no original claim. There is no R. There is no assault. That never happened. The defense is it's political. Defendant has consistently claimed that the lawsuits are a con job, a hoax, and questioned whether she's pushing a political agenda. It's been part of this story the whole time. Says shame on people for making up false stories. Carol has also brought this issue into question, having argued that Trump asserts a broader conspiracy. And they say, lastly, if this court doesn't want to reopen discovery, we respect a ruling that is essentially scolding Carol, permitting an adverse inference against E. Jean Carroll in front of the jury if those goes forward. And for the reasons set forth above, they seek this is what Alina Abba is asking for. A limited reopening of the discovery. A one-month continuance of the trial. We'll see if she is successful. Or in the alternative, an adverse inference instructing against plaintiff for defiance of discovery. Signed by Alina Abba. April 13th, New York, New York. Counsel for Donald Trump. So some pretty nefarious acti activities described here. Billionaires and other lawyers twisting people into doing things that maybe they have no real basis to do, no real inclination to do. I don't know, no, 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 not a big deal. You sure we can't use you for our own purposes? We can't just take you and exploit your life to serve these ends? Certainly feels like that is what we are observing here. But that's what Alina sent over, and the judge issued a ruling. Let's see what he said about this. He writes, on April 10th, Trump's, no, Carol's lawyer disclosed to Trump that Carol, who had testified previously at a deposition, was not sure about some expenses. Now, her counsel, 
Others re recalled that they did secure additional funding. Now they advise assistance was secured September 2020 after commencement of these actions. The judge says, in subsequent discussions between the parties and their lawyers, Carroll disclosed the identity of a financial backer said to be a prominent funder of democratic causes and the not-for-profit entity that he apparently provided funding for. Carroll's lawyers further represented that Carroll has never met, has never been a party to any communications with anyone associated with the organization. So on this basis, Trump's team moves for reopening of the discovery, a continuance, and an adverse inference. Here's the ruling. The question whether and when plaintiff or her counsel have obtained financial support in this action has nothing directly to do with the ultimate merits of the case. Cites a case. It says, although I do not now decide the question, it perhaps might prove relevant to the question of plaintiff's credibility in view of the deposition testimony referred above. Accordingly, the judge says, I will permit a brief and carefully circumscribed examination of that narrow question without prejudging the question of whether and to what extent the examination of this matter may be permitted at trial. Saying, I'm just going to allow you to crack open the box. You can just peek inside. I'm not telling you if you can take it out. I'm not telling you if you can play with it at trial, but you can look inside. That's it. Accordingly, the defendant, and once you tell me what's inside, then we'll decide if we can play with that thing. Accordingly, Trump's application is granted, but only to the extent that Carol shall furnish to Trump no later than Sunday, April 16th, with documents sufficient to establish that the inception of the financing for this litigation incurred in or after mid-2020. I wonder why he's tailoring it only to that time. Maybe because it's about the litigation or the election. Any documents concerning the state of Carol's knowledge, if any, of the financing is fair game. As of the date of her deposition and of present. Any documents concerning that about the plaintiff's knowledge, not necessarily about the lawyer's knowledge. So anything she signed, any uh, retainer agreements saying where financing was going to come from, I'd be very curious to look at those. And two, defendant may conduct additional deposition of Miss Carroll not to exceed 60 minutes. Huh, so they get another crack. And it also shall be limited to the subject of her knowledge of the financing assistance as of the date of the deposition and as of the present. Completed no later than April 19th. The motion is denied in all other aspects. No adverse, actually the court says we will reserve for determination at the trial, an adverse inference instruction, but trial is not getting moved. Trial stays on track, my friends. April 25th, 2023, we are barreling forward to a trial. This is a defamation trial brought by E. Jean Carroll against Donald Trump. And we're learning that it looks like the entire lawsuit or a portion of the lawsuit, at least, was funded by billionaire Reed Hoffman, who founded American Future Republic, which in late disclosures, we learn is financing Ms. Carroll's claims against Donald Trump. She was urged by George Conway, Trump hater, TDS extraordinaire, to bring the claim. And it was supported by the billionaire, Reed Hoffman. So as we see, as we've talked a lot about here, all of the different tentacles of the beast that exists to go and try to take over different factions of the political board battlefield continue on, billionaires jumping into the game. And it's probably just going to get worse. Of course, we'll continue to cover. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here as we covered all of this good stuff. We did hit some good ground today. Billionaire busted, learned a lot about Reed Hoffman, and we also heard about Trump and his seven-hour depot. 
But now, my friends, it is time to hear from you and to see what you have to say from the amazing Super Chats and from our friends over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, from our friends on Rumble, from our friends on Twitter. Yeah, baby, this is live, man. Yeah, Manuel. Yeah, this is live, my friend. Manuel G in the house. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here with us live. Let's see what else we've got cooking. We had a couple Super Chats come in. And thank you, everybody, for the generous donos on this lovely Friday. Hey, Fred Petamonte is here. He says, Rob, Johnny's birthday is in six days. I assume you've paid the caterers and entertainment. We have RSVPs from Trump Sr., Trump Jr., Bannon, Gorka, Gates, and MTG. Holy moly, that sounds like it's going to be a banger. Uh, all right. Yeah. Catering and entertainment. All right. Did Johnny, did Johnny have any of that Epstein money? I'm going to need some of that Epstein money for, uh, to fund the whole thing. Or what, what is he selling now? Uranium or something? It's going to be a lot, you know, it's expensive. I don't have that. Or I need some more super chats or something. That's going to be expensive. That's a big party. Anyways, good to see you there, Johnny and Fred in the house. Hopefully you don't, you guys don't blow up your residence with your uranium. Good luck to you. Catherine Molina says, is it legal for a nonprofit to fund the legal fee? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. You can, for, you can form all sorts of nonprofits for legal fees and nonprofit as vehicles for all sorts of different things. I think that like the fact that he did that is not a problem. The fact that it wasn't disclosed is the problem. So legally, I don't think that they were in violation of any laws by doing that. But they were asked about it and they didn't disclose it. And that's what makes it problematic. And even the judge is recognizing it saying, yeah, they got to reopen that thing. We also have intellectual iconoclasm in the house says Kaplan created Times Up, represented Weinstein and heard at the same time. She also represents the Bidens, told them to go to Ver go after Veritas and the SDNY. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who, who that is specifically. I've heard that name, but I think it is a pretty small circle. You know, they all refer amongst themselves. This morning on our members only locals and YouTube, we talked about Mark Elias. I've got another video coming out about that. Mark Elias is somebody who's also in kind of the same circle. And so, you know, the fact that you've got Roberta Kaplan, who's just sort of geared up and she takes the handoff from George Conway. George Conway's out there probably Twitter as, you know, hey, hey, you hate Trump too. Hey, sue him. You sue, sue. And they're just doing this thing. And they're, they have this little assembly line of litigants that they can just develop and run. And they're probably making a killing doing it. Luke Smart is here. Luke Smart in the house says the irony of these billionaires who make their fortune when there's a good Republican president and the economy is good to only turn around and do this. Well, I think the reason the billionaires and the ultra wealthy do it is because they want to pull the ladder up under them. Well, you know, once they get to the top, then they start to say, regulation, we need regulation. I see this all the time. You know, all these billionaires now are calling for like AI regulation and all sorts of other regulation because they don't want to democratize it so that other people can have access to it. If you, you in, if you pass major re regulation, then guess who can comply with the regulations? The people who can afford the regulations. So then you have the Googles and the Facebooks, and they, of course, keep all of the politicians grifted to the core. So they just lift it up. They lift the gates up. And I've been wondering where the Republican billionaires are. I mean, other than Elon, I guess. We'll see if they come out of the woodworks. But the Democrats certainly have a lot of them. And so, hey, thank you, everybody, for those super chats. And I owe a major apology to Maybe Sunshine, who has been gifting members on YouTube. And I've been missing them. And I really apologize to that for that. But very grateful. Maybe Sunshine is inviting all sorts of new people into our YouTube memberships. We're grateful to Maybe Sunshine. We're grateful to Curtis Bartle, who also invited five new people as members to our community. And so, we're grateful for that. I mean, our morning chats are filling up and we're having a ton of fun. So if you want some additional content that's a little bit more casual, then come and join us as a member on YouTube or on Locals. And you can grab our Telegram link, which is where we do 
you know, the, the chat that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. And we'd love to see you there. And so thank you very much, Maybe Sunshine. Thank you very much to Curtis Bartle and everybody who is helping our community grow. Let's say hello to our Rumble friends and to Twitter before we jump in over to our after party on this lovely, lovely, lovely day. Who is here? First of all, the Antikiss is over on Rumble. And I think we got some new Rumble mods in the house. We're grateful for our Rumble mods now. Got added to the mind map. We'll say thank you here in a minute. But who's over there? NC Native, Fairy Dance. We got Donut Mind Me, Pepe the Gray, Seth Covington's in the house. User 1121, Paul Blart's over there. A job well done. Nick Danger, Pepe the Gray, Nug Monster. Good to see you, Nug, along with Seth Covington and many of our other friends over on Rumble. Thanks for everybody for joining up over on Rumble. We appreciate you being there. And on Twitter, let's see, is anybody watching on Twitter? Whoa, we got seven people. It's almost, it's almost 10. <sighs> Holy moly. You know, last week we almost broke the whole platform. I apologize for that. We had over 200 people. It's probably never going to happen again. I think, I think like Saturn was aligned with Uranus or something. Here, Vienticus says, the only difference between a wealthy person and a poor person is that the wealthy person has more resources with which to inflict their stupidity on others. Also, rich or poor, they're still a sucker, born every minute. Who's another one? V says, icon? Uh, I don't know, B. I think I see my icon. Are you in dark? Oh, gosh, I don't know what happened to it. You're right, I don't see it now. It's a good question. I don't know where it went. Danny McWilliams says, since 2020, the rule of law has been turned around on its head. No doubt about that. Hey, Paul Mino says, somebody gifted me a membership on your YouTube. It was probably maybe Sunshine, or maybe it was Curtis Bartle in the house. But we're grateful to see you over there. And deplorable Fred. Hey, it's Johnny. Hey, it's Johnny, my friends. Make sure you go and follow Fred, <laughs> deplorable Johnny uh, over on Twitter. And we love our Twitter friends as well. It's good to see everybody over there. Paul Mino in the house. And we support those free speech platforms, baby. But all right, my friends, that is it for us on the day. And we will leave it right there. We're going to jump over on this lovely Friday to our community for a little bit of a debrief, an after party, casual Friday evening stuff. You know how it is. Watching the watchers.locals.com. And if you're a YouTube member, Grab the Telegram link. That's where you will watch the debriefs. Just grab the link, download the Telegram. It's free. Just get the link in the community post and come and join us. Um, and let's see here. I'm checking another screen. I just got a message. Hey, sweet. Did I miss these, V? Uh, okay, so V from Curtis Bartle. Thank you, Curtis. So, so Jamma, Eddie, Alex, Michael Manson, and Midnight Spirit are all coming in. Dolphin Fan also gave us an amazing membership gift. Dolphin fan in the house. Thank you, Dolphin fan. You know, the problem with the, the problem on my end is I can't see the gifts. They, they, so I try to capture them. V's capturing them for me, sending them over here. I just want to be ultra clear that I am so grateful for everybody who is purchasing those. Thank you, Dolphin fan. Thank you to Maybe Sunshine. Thank you to Curtis Bartle. Our community continues to grow. Thank you to your generosity. It's a ton of fun. It's fun when there's more people in the chat and you keep inviting them over. So thank you for doing that. Now, we are going over there, so come and join us at watchingthewatchers.locals.com or on Telegram and grab the link, our YouTube members. Don't forget, my friends, before we get out of here on the day, to get your vegetables. Get your fruits and vegetables. I know, I know, but it's good for you, all right? It's good for you. We have to do it. We'll do it together. Let's get healthy. Go to fieldofgreens.com. Save 15% with code Robert. Get your real organic superfood. The vegetables want to be eaten. You're going to feel good. You're going to look good with Field of Greens, fieldofgreens.com, code Robert. Also, if you like this mind map and you like using mind maps and you want to dump a bunch of stuff out of your head into a mind map, check out spotlightlawyer.com slash mind map. 
or go to slash Trump if you want to check out the Trump mind map and see how it works. But it's a lot of fun. And you can create your own free account at that address. We want to thank the mods who mod down the fort for us and keep things nice and orderly here in the chat and on the show. Big shout outs to Vianti Kiss Prime, K Bean, Just Gaz, Playing Hooky in the House, Ronnie Cole, Zulu, Geomancy Games, Zach Nichols, John Allen, and we got some new additions. John Allen and Janek, 909 Dog Digger, and Donut Mind Me over on Rumble. Shout out to Sleepy Dog Lee, Jigam Gigam, our amazing meme smiths on locals we're grateful for all of you who make this show nice and orderly keep things on the track and i appreciate it but that my friends is it for us on the day if you're a member stick around we'll be right back in a minute or two but if not my friends that is it for us on the week it was a busy one we'll be back here next week to do it all again we have a couple days to unplug rest get outside get some vitamin d do those breathing exercises Unplug from politics so that we can come back refreshed, rejuvenated, and ready to go because it's going to be another busy one. I know it. And I hope to see you right back here so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability and transparency down upon our system with the hope of finding justice. Make it a beautiful weekend, my friends. I'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye-bye, everybody.